This is Twit. 3D motion tracking is very popular. It's used in video games. You've seen it in movies. It's even used for research. But unless you have a giant studio with a lot of different devices everywhere, it can be difficult. But a company called Xsense makes it a lot easier. They have a suit that Jason has been willing to wear. Uh, this is my normal dress for the day. <laughs> and we're talking to Christopher Adamson, who is the senior product specialist yep. at Xsense. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about uh, what makes this suit so special. Why do I feel so constricted? Yeah, so Xsense, uh, as a company, we kind of actually have three segments. We have a segment making single sensors for industrial applications, for like drone stabilization, things like that. We have a segment for movement science, for sports rehabilitation, prosthetic research, the things you were just mentioning. And then 3D character animation is what I specialize in. Uh, we have two sets of hardware. Jason, you're wearing the Owinda system right now, which is a fully wireless 17 trackers that go to a single USB hub. And then we have a full Lycra suit version, but both are great systems. This one's typically used for starting off animators, schools, um, because of the ease to get in and out of this system. Um, everything for the hardware then comes into our software, MVN Animate where we calculate it on a humanoid structure and give data for games and films and everything. I feel like with motion capture, I'm used to seeing like the big, I mean, it, this is a little bit of a suit, but it's not the full body suit that I'm used yeah. to seeing. <laughs> I mean, is, is this at its core what makes this system different or do you also offer that and why would you choose one versus the other? Yeah, um, what makes this system different is it is inertial based motion capture. So it's actually relying on an IMU sensor, which is a gyroscope tracking rotation, a magnetometer tracking magnetic north and accelerometer tracking gravitational pull. Um, what that means is you don't need optical. You don't need a bunch of cameras for a right. stage. It's your body moving sensors, then getting calculated into our software. So it's zero occlusion, 100% of the body movement, go anywhere mocap. We went to visit 2K Games a little while ago, and they had, well, we were in, you know, we were doing NBA 2K. They had a giant gym and so much stuff. I mean, how is that different? How can you do all that without all that giant, all the million cameras everywhere? Yeah, so it's, it's two different technologies, and they both, they both have their pluses and minuses. Um, so for an optical system, it's three cameras that triangulate a point. So how that works is off of translation. It's going to give you perfect translational accuracy. How an inertial system works is it's completely off rotation. So you get body measurements to get the proper global position. It's just, there's two ways to skin that cat and uh, both systems play a role in where they need to go in the motion capture world. So you said that this has been used in like every Marvel movie, and um, so th this same system or the body suit do you, they usually use? Well, yeah, I mean, um, most major films and games company own systems like this. Um, uh, it's, they'll use both. They'll, actually, a lot of game studios do prefer the Awinda system because they'll have a lot of animators going in the suit. So typically a Lycra a full Lycra like wetsuit isn't going to be something that a lot of animators want to get in, especially if you have one that doesn't like to shower or anything like that. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. stinky and weird. So they go with the Awinda. Uh, but then a lot of big, you know, big stages that you're kind of used to will go with the Lycra suit. So they'll actually wear the Link system, is what we call it, and get that fidelity and motion capture they're used to. So the same system is used for video games and movies and prosthetic research? It's so, yeah, it's the same hardware. There's the Awinda and the Link. But then, so for the movement science and sports and everything like that, it, it feeds into a different software that is kind of more open with the algorithms it can give you. For the animation software, it's you record and export. You can do things like time code. You can live stream into other programs so you can see it, your character directly on a 3D character. Like, um, Unity, Motion Builder, Maya, Unreal, all sorts of, sorts of things. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I, I feel like I need to keep moving. Like if I'm staying still, then I'm doing the, as a the technology specialist, a disservice. As a product specialist, it's always like, you could tell if somebody's first time in a mocap suit, it's just immediate dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of can't help it. I mean, it does the worm pretty, yeah. pretty effectively. That 
that's that's pretty impressive. So he seems to really like this suit. His yeah. birthday's in September. How much do I have to save <laughs> in order to buy him one just like this by then? Yeah, so, well, typically, if you're a studio, the package ranges um, for software and hardware. We have different license schemes, things like that. So the package could be from 12000 to 34000 but we actually just released an indie program, which what that is is you'll buy just the hardware, you own the hardware, and then you'll actually have one year of pro software, so our highest tier is software for free. So if you're an indie program, you can check out that indie specs, what that means, and then that would be 7,500 for this Windows system or 12,200 for the full link setup. And how far does it go? Like how, how far could he get before we would lose? Signal? Yeah, so oh, with the Windows system, um, it has a range of 150 feet from the USB hub here. So I could go for like a little walk down the hallway and it would probably yeah. oh, continue no. to It'd capture? Be, yeah, it would be fine. Okay. Um, and then we <laughs> Bye. have... Bye. We have a USB stick, so people actually take a Surface tablet, put the USB stick in it, and then put it in a backpack. Then your range is limitless. Then the Link system actually has on-body recording, so the full Liker suit can actually record for up to 12 hours on a little built-in SD card, so you don't even need a computer. That's when people are doing skiing and skydiving and things like that. We actually developed that technology for movement science for, like, uh, century race or something like that, or running a marathon to actually see, you know, the, fa the fatigue in athletes. But we're seeing it used a lot in the animation field for when people are like doing car chase scenes or something like that and need to motion capture their movements, then people are using on-body recording. So prosthetic research and fatigue for marathoners, what are some of the other research applications for this? For the movement science, yeah, um, a lot of ergonomics. So if you're in a factory and you need to see how people are moving constantly, that's a pretty typical application. A lot of sports sciences, it's endless. I'm, I'm the 3D character animation guy, so I know roughly what they do, but mostly my customers are the film and game people. The, obviously the system is based around a humanoid character, but you can also track other objects that link into the person that's being tracked, right? Like yeah. how, how, uh, how precision based is that tracking, like on an object that a humanoid is, or a humanoid, a human is actually interacting with? Both systems can support up to four additional trackers. Okay. So it's, it's, Based, so your, your movement of your body is based off your measurements, right? So the prop itself is based off of the movement of a segment of your body. So you're going to put the prop on your hand. It's going to be like good for a sword or like a sheath or wings or a tail or people even put it on their jaw to get a jaw movement, things like that. Um, so that's going to track 100% of the data. Uh, what our prop trackers don't work for so much is like basketballs or something that's going to leave your hand because we mm. still need that right. translation from our body segment. You want to pretend you have a sword, don't you, Jason? I, I would love that. <laughs> so we had to recalibrate. Jason now has his sword, the sword he's always wanted. Isn't this a beautiful sword? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so we got a sensor right there. And all, you know, I was actually really surprised when you were putting this on. I, I just kind of figured there would need to be two, one, one out at the end and one at the base, but really, this one sword seems to capture the movement entirely. Yeah, it's going to capture the whole rotation from yeah. the segment of your body on. So. Right. That's really cool. So obviously in a scene, if this, if this was a scene that I was recording in Hollywood, I'm available, um, <laughs> you would want more than just one person in a, in a sword fight. So how many of these systems could you have running concurrently to capture all of that data and yeah. make it into a um, so at our software, MVN Animate, can support up to four characters at a time. Uh, we do have people that will use like three computers, each running four, so eight and 12 kind of setups. And that is the big benefit of our system because there's no markers, you don't get any occlusion. So if you were to go like hug somebody or roll on the ground, you're going to get 100% of the body movement. So you can uh, add clothes or like a costume or uniform or anything to that? In our software, it's, it's this biomechanical model and it's actually very researched biomechanical model. It was a few PhD projects and it's so that biomechanical model you see is what we project. Um, but like I said, our software can live stream into Unity and Motion Builder and Maya and Unreal. So 
we can just go directly onto a 3D character. I can show you it. What is typical for this is if a talent wants to see how they actually look on a 3D character and how to act, then they can see this reference. Um, people will also use it as a recording feature. So if you're just doing previs and need to get a lot of movement really fast, you can just put the suit on and record directly into Maya or Motion Builder, and it will directly record onto that 3D character So some, for some really fast motion capture. We were also talking a little bit about uh, HD reprocessing yeah, uh, to kind of clean things up. What, what's that all about? Yeah, so um, we had this new software release in about November, um, but it was one of the most significant releases we've had for XSense. It's actually an engine, so how we're taking the sensor data and processing it within our software that we've been working on for almost 10 years now. So we're taking all this sensor data and the new engine actually has magnetic immunity, so you don't get any sort of segment drift, which is revolutionary for inertial motion capture. But we also added HD reprocessing. And what that does is it takes a recorded file, and then it will do a, a sort of render process that actually gets rid of the foot shaking and any other jitters that you might typically see in motion capture data. A typical high dynamic motion of a file, you might see some sort of shake. So if you see, the sternum will shake right there, <laughs> and then his foot kind of twists when he lands. Yeah. So that's actually the tracker is jumping around on his body, so the reprocess is going to solve that. So then if I actually go to what that file is after the HD reprocess, you're going to get something more like this. So no shake in the sternum, and the foot lands oh, perfectly wow. nice. Yeah. So you can imagine this is a huge leap because in animation, uh, animator receives mocap data. A lot of times what they do is they're just fixing like little foot jitters and kind of like shakes of the sternum or something like that. If you don't have to do that, then you get 100 times more motion capture data, more movements, better quality. More efficiency. Happier people. Yeah, more efficiency more on movements. the back end because they don't have to remove all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so anyone who's watching this who says you have the coolest job ever, what would you uh, recommend? Would you recommend people learn Maya, Unity, all of it? What would you recommend people? Uh, as far as motion capture goes, Motion Builder is the big mocap tool. That's for where most people do the cleaning and then putting at the actual data on 3D characters. But we're seeing a lot of Unreal and Unity, the game engines really just blowing up because they're almost making cinema quality renders in real time. So that real time kind of application is what's getting huge in the motion capture world right now, for sure. And now the systems are capable enough to, to yeah. keep up with it. Yeah, real time when you can uh, just jump in a suit and then shoot your movie as yeah. whatever, an alien or something. Then and not be locked into be a studio either, which is a really big benefit of this system. You know, you, sh you, you guys have a, a, a demonstration video on your site of a woman dancing surround, you know, out in a kind of a, a loading dock, yeah. you know, and like every, the world becomes your studio at that point. Yes, totally go anywhere. If you need a jungle gym because you need a monkey bar scene, go do that, or if you need a forest, go to a forest. It's great. Go anywhere mocap, really. <laughs> well, Chris Adamson, you are the senior product specialist. Thanks so much for yeah. joining us. Yeah, thank no you. No problem. Excellent. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Do so you like, dance us out of here? Okay, sure. I can do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. How about a kick? <laughs> kick. <laughs> I'm going to kick you, Anthony. Mm.